Welcome back to Bold Like a Leopard. I do want to let you know that we do have a new t-shirt for Razor Sharp News Chronicle up on the Etsy store. I'll try to put that in the description. And we have a new newsletter out from there. And I will put a link for you to sign up to the Razor Sharp News Chronicle newsletter uh, in the description as well. Getting to the topic. So, if you are looking for current events today, I will be putting up a video later today. This video, though, will be concerning a little bit more a reflection on where I think a lot of this went wrong. And I have to say that earlier this week, uh, we watched Snowden starring uh, Joseph, Joseph uh, Gordon-Levitt. Nicolas Cage was also in it. And I have to say that it's one of those movies where, while it may have been well produced and there could, there could not have been a better performance, especially by Gordon-Levitt, it's not really what is needed in order to get people to understand the gravity of a topic, which, in my opinion, is really one of the reasons I try to tell people, uh, you know, instead of watching TV or movies, you have to try to get your information as much as possible from primary sources, from books, from, uh, I guess if you have the time, from documents. And unfortunately, in the world we live in, most people don't have the time to do proper research and find their information that way. So unfortunately, they have to get it from movies. They have to get it from TV. So Snowden was actually produced in 2016, and it was directed by Oliver Stone. And one of the reasons that I think that's that's really a problem is that Stone is known to take a lot of these, uh, you know, topics, especially in history. And generally play with them and, and embellish them. Uh, he takes very, very serious. Uh, uh, I mean, he, he basically dry, he does a lot of uh, license. He takes a very strong license to change the way that, um, you know, history was according to his own films. And I, I'll give one <laughs> very obvious example. Uh, in the movie Nixon, so we're going to step away just from uh, the Snowden review, which is, the, this is like a, four, a review four years later, so it's not just a review of the movie, it's kind of saying how it stood up to time. In the movie Nixon, which was also uh, produced by Oliver Stone, was released in 1995, it was an excellent movie with Sir Anthony Hopkins playing Richard Nixon, but it includes such things as, as a fictional uh, walk that Nixon took one day to the Lincoln Memorial by himself as president where he had some sort of running discussion with these college students. And I, I don't know if it was something that, that was supposed to have happened in a dream in the movie or whatever, but even, if it was a dream, then then even that, like, so you're, you're trying to say that in Nixon's head, he was walking to the Lincoln Memorial uh, by himself talking to college students. So again, th this is He's a person who takes serious dramatic license. And when, when we're dealing with a topic like Edward Snowden, it's much more serious than with Richard Nixon because that was something that had happened in, in the fairly distant past. It, over 20 years had passed between the Watergate scandal and Nixon's presidency and Stone's version of it and, and, the, and the movie Nixon, which was more about his broader career. The Snowden movie actually is something that deals a little bit more with a topic that is contemporary to our times. And I think one of the reasons that I want to talk about this is I think a lot of the problems that we're dealing with today went wrong uh, at the time in 2013 when, when Edward Snowden uh, became a whistleblower. Obviously, it wasn't the beginning of the problem, but it was a major turning point that could have seriously change the way that we uh, deal with mass surveillance. 
And the fact of the matter is that nothing ended up coming of it. Yes, there were some people who made a, a major to-do about it on the, especially, uh, you know, people like Glenn Greenwald and, and Julian Assange and on the right people like, like uh, you know, the InfoWars people, can't mention a certain person's name, but uh, <laughs> the, you know who I'm talking about. There were many people across the political spectrum that started to say, wait a second, this isn't the way that intelligence agencies are supposed to treat private information, uh, information that we have uh, on, you know, on Internet servers pertaining to people's private lives. This isn't the way that uh, the Fourth Amendment works. And those people started to t talk about it, but there was never a mass movement and there was never a media acknowledgement of the real problem, even though they gave lip service to the problem that was happening. And the fact of the matter is that in, in 2019, Edward Snowden admitted that President Obama made the surveillance state worse, but he didn't really go far enough. And this is something that he, he continuously does. He said, uh, maybe Barack Obama honestly did not want to get to this later, but what we can see today is is for all the good that may have been done in the White House, there's an issue where the president went through two full terms and did not fix the problem, but in fact made it worse. Worse, Snowden told podcast host Joe Rogan in a video posted on Wednesday. So let's let's watch that clip. For some reason, this is systems are in place and they're unconstitutional and you feel this deep responsibility to let the American people know about this what what makes you take the leap so this is um, covered uh, extensively in the book um, because it took a long time I would imagine um, people people you know yeah right exactly people like to think it's like a cinematic moment um, where I find this golden document, like the Stellar Wind Report, and that's the closest thing to a smoking gun, right, that, that exists. But look, if you found that, you, you can read that later, look at that, and like imagine yourself being like, oh, I'm going to go outside on the courthouse steps and wave this thing and burn my life to the ground, burn my family to the ground, I'm never going to be work again, uh, I'm going to jail for the rest of my life. Um, the question is, what would it take for you uh, to light a match and burn your life to the ground? Um, and for a long time, uh, too long, um, the answer was nothing. And I'm so I'm not going to go through this because it's 14 minutes long. But uh, in in this interview, uh, Rogan asked about Obama's campaign promise to protect whistleblowers, and Snowden laughed and said, "Well, Obama also during his campaign he campaigned actively against the warrantless wiretapping." from the Bush administration. And uh, then he, so it says Snowden went on to paint a picture in which career intelligence staffers effectively fear-mongered newly elected presidents into supporting problematic programs. If you've got the IC against you, they can stonewall you. They can put out stories that are going going to be problematic for you every day of your presidency, he added. So, so back to the actual uh, film. I want to say this. So, Despite the well-produced uh, dramatic interplay uh, between some of the characters, I think some of it I was I, like, here's the thing. Why is it useless to get your information from a movie like Snowden? Because the dramatization actually uh, shunts aside the main thrust of the issue. Okay, so on the one hand, during the film, you do see Edward Snowden growing as a human being from from just this fresh-faced uh, computer nerd and former Army Special Forces recruit who had to fall out of the Special Forces due to some, I think it was some sort of stress fracture. So you, you see him growing from that more innocent phase when he believed in the war on terror, when he believed in the surveillance state. And he ends up going into the, I think it was the NSA, and then later the CIA, and working in the signals intelligence departments, all the various programs, and participating in all of these uh, various uh, different schemes that the government has in order to collect personal data and information. 
as part of the war on terror. And you see that juxtaposed on some of these scenes where, of course, you know, he, he had this relationship with his, his uh, girlfriend and later wife. And a lot of that is thrown in there. And then th so those things, I can tell you, they make a good movie. They don't make a good documentary. OK, Every, it goes without saying that you assume because Edward Snowden, the real Edward Snowden, is married to his wife, that he has a strong relationship with her. I mean, you would hope so, but it's not really relevant to the movie it maybe humanizes him a little more because if you watch interviews like we just watched some of it with Joe Rogan, he's a very colorless person. He's, he's a geek. He's kind of, uh, ha you know, he wears the flannel shirt. He's, he's a computer guy and it makes him a little bit more human. But the real problem is that other themes were largely, uh, you know, set aside in the movie. And even for Oliver Stone, I think it is a little bit, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit restrained the way that he treated not only President Bush, who I think Oliver Stone would never pretend to be a friend of. Now, he did criticize both President Bush and President Obama, but I would say that he generally made it seem like they were simply ignoring the issue or they were tolerating it because of what it gave them. And it didn't go far into, I guess, showing that they personally benefited from these policies that violated Americans' Fourth Amendment rights, policies that also led to the deaths of, of people overseas, you know, non-American citizens. In one case, an American citizen that would be uh, the son of Anwar al um, the, Those Those types of issues that we talk about more on YouTube and more more in alternative journalism, he didn't so much touch on. And I think that all of it was a little bit ignored in the interest of making the film more theatrically uh, acceptable. And this is something that you find very often in film, which is that when you're treating a subject that is uh, nonfiction, you often have to embellish it with uh, dramatic scenery. Okay, so the, the Nixon example from Oliver Stone is a good one. Uh, I would say that if you look at some of these films like Gangs of New York, uh, that's long enough, that's long ago enough in history that you can basically embellish the story enough because who's really harmed by people seeing this, uh, you know, this romance develop between, I think it was DiCaprio and I don't think it was Kate Winslet in that one, <laughs> but you, you or I don't even remember who it was in Gangs of New York. But uh, when you try to implant into these movies, these, uh, you know, first of all, um, you know, a romantic uh, theme that doesn't necessarily go towards the topic that does detract from the main thrust of the issue. Um, and, and therefore the role of some of the central players in the Snowden saga was not very prominent. And some of those people would be, uh, I could, let me see if I could find them, but uh, I would say that Glenn Greenwald didn't really uh, play that big of a role in it. He was, I think, in, in only a couple segments. Um, Tom Wilkinson, he played this guy, Ewan McCaskill, this uh, g journalist for The Guardian. You didn't see Julian Assange at all. Uh, and in my, like that, if you if you really look at it, it, it basically cuts out the heart of the Snowden saga and puts in its place uh, just this artificial, you know, valve, right? So yes, it's fine that you portray some of his personal life. Uh, by the way, it doesn't really talk much about his, his the rest of his family. So it's not as if, the rest of, of uh, Edward Snowden's family is really important for the saga. Uh, and uh, I would say that a lot of the focus is more on the people that mentored him within the NSA and within the CIA. Uh, people like, uh, I don't know if this is a real person, but this Reese Evans played this guy named uh, Corbin O'Brien, who was, I would say, the stand-in for the villain in the, in the movie. Meaning that, Every time that he had some sort of moral quandary uh, relating to what he was doing within the 
CIA. Uh, this character, uh, Corbin, Corbin O'Brien, uh, would come back at him and say, hey, you know, you're part of this already. Uh, basically, you're guilty just as much as we are guilty. And we keep you around because of your abilities, not because of your moral fiber or anything. And that was really the extent to which you had criticism of the system. There's only brief mention of James Clapper. Uh, that was in the context of his testimony, I think it was in 2013, before the Senate Intelligence Committee, in which he lied about the NSA's collection of data from American citizens without a warrant. So um, those issues, which four years later we now know uh, became much more of a problem than they were in 2016 when it was released, given what's happened with the Michael Flynn case, Carter Page has recently sued the FBI uh, regarding the surveillance that they imposed upon him uh, through the FISA court, right? Uh, those issues, those are those are things that Oliver, Oliver Stone couldn't cover at the time because they hadn't happened yet, right? But he'd already known that this was an issue that was an open wound uh, in terms of protecting the civil liberties in the United States. These were already issues that other Americans had suffered for. Uh, other Americans had found their uh, lives uh, interrupted because of the surveillance state. So Oliver Stone basically made a movie that was a marketable version of the saga that Edward Snowden went through. And it wasn't a bad movie if you're looking at it just in terms of movie quality. Uh, like I said, I think most of the actors did... A reasonably good job uh, some of the technological stuff I don't think was exactly mind-blowing and uh, of course there <laughs> there was the scene where he ends up putting a piece of tape over his webcam because he thinks that uh, the NSA is watching him while he's having sex and things like that uh, th those are things that I think you know maybe they happened uh, it's based on a book by Luke Harding and Luke Harding is a Guardian journalist who uh, he's the clown himself since the Russia Gate fiasco happened. He's one of the people who believes that Donald Trump may have been a Kremlin associate since the 1980s, <laughs> you know, when, when I think he visited Moscow one time in the 80s. So uh, I, I would say that, unfortunately, the, you know, Oliver Stone, I think he had great intentions going into this, even though I don't really, I, I think Oliver Stone as a person, I don't think I would really... Uh, jibe with his worldview. He's, he's very much to the left. He was a supporter of Hugo Chavez. And uh, you look at uh, a lot of his movies and, uh, you know, you can see, for example, Wall Street. Uh, that was a great movie. Is it based on anything that was uh, true? No. It's, it's, uh, it's basically just a dramatization of, of the way he, he looks at Wall Street, right? Um, another one that he wrote and produced, uh, The Doors, right? So I remember there was a lot of criticism for the way that portrayed Jim Morrison and his, and his people. JFK, okay, I think JFK is the, the biggest example. JFK was a movie where Oliver Stone, he took the story of the Kennedy assassination and ran with the premise that this group of weirdos from New Orleans, uh, including, I, I don't remember the guy's name, but it was basically this circle of, of people. I think they were like some sort of gay subculture in New Orleans. And it was put, I think one of them was played by Joe Pesci. Another one was played by Tommy Lee Jones. And that they were the real people who assassinated uh, Kennedy and this one New Orleans district attorney attempted to prosecute them and they were all acquitted. He ran with the premise that it was true. This was something that, that if you look at the actual evidence, none of the men who were accused were actually, uh, there was no evidence against them. There was nothing. It was basically a, 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 just a red herring out of nowhere. So you look at Oliver Stone's history and the way he treats history whether it's in JFK, whether it's in Nixon, uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure there was, a, there was some criticism of his, uh, of his movie about the doors. 
Uh, w was not a story. Uh, you, ever, you ever watched W with uh, Josh Brolin? Uh, I'm sure that there's plenty of questions as to whether what was going on is true to the way the Bush administration uh, operated. I think that Oliver Stone producing a movie about Snowden, it makes a great movie. It doesn't make great uh, sharing of information. So after four years, you can actually see some of the problems with how the movie treated the topic. Okay. One of the problems is that it didn't go far enough in saying that as they're at, in their roles as president, George Bush and Barack Obama basically created this monster or, or enabled this monster because those agencies already existed, but they harnessed it in order to pursue people and violate their civil liberties. And that was, I guess, a side theme. It, it should have been, I would say, a much more major theme of the movie. Another problem that we're talking about is the treatment of journalists. And the truth is, you know, Greenwald had problems. Th these were not covered in the movie. Okay, Glenn Greenwald, I believe, had to flee the country. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons he ended up living in Brazil for a while. He still lives in, actually still lives in Brazil, and he has new problems over there. But uh, I would say, in retrospect, after four years, you know, the movie... It remains a good movie. It doesn't remain good information. And if I were you, I would try to look through the original documents, look through WikiLeaks, look through some of the other, um, you know, court cases that have happened since then. Uh, pay attention to the Carter Page court case that's happening now. Uh, everything, I guess, plugs into the problems that we've been having since 2016. And, and think about it that way. He produces this movie in 2016, and what did the world learn from it? Nothing. Uh, it it did it didn't do too well. Um, let me see what the box office numbers were. So Snowden made only third. It didn't even it didn't even get its own budget back. It, it made it was its budget was 40 million dollars. It made 37.3 million dollars. So it was basically a box office bomb if you want to put it that way. So for all of the effort that Oliver Stone put into it, the movie was a flop and audiences didn't really go to the theater in order, like a, a, a drama movie, right? Um, a, a drama movie about somebody like Edward Snowden is no more compelling than a drama movie that's completely fictional. Like, like, uh, I don't know. Um, you know, maybe, maybe something based on uh, one of these, uh, you know, House of Cards, for example. House of Cards is completely fictional. It may be based on some real events with real characters, but House of Cards is a much bigger hit than Snowden because it's embellished. It's it's not even embellished. It's based on just this, uh, you know, this this writer's vision. It's not based on a writer's rendition of true world events. So. Edward Snowden's, the, the, the movie, the movie Snowden, was a flop. It didn't do what it was intended to do, which was to make it basically a, a call for action. And immediately afterward, you had an election with uh, Hillary Clinton and, and uh, John, Donald Trump, where a lot of the same issues that the Snowden saga dealt with, the surveillance state, uh, you know, fear mongering, uh, war, you know, saber rattling against other countries that was employed in the election in 2016. Hillary Clinton was constantly talking about Russia in 2016 and then thereafter. Right. So the movie had zero effect and the Snowden saga had very little effect because by then the media had basically said, well, <laughs> despite everything that written WikiLeaks has revealed to us, whether it was through Chelsea Manning, whether or, or Bradley Manning, Chelsea or Bradley, <laughs> you know, not now, by the way, Ellen Page is now Elliot Page for those of you that woke up a little late today. Uh, anyway, so um, what's what's been going on is that all of these different accomplishments by WikiLeaks that were under the Bush administration, suddenly under Obama. And I know for many of you, this will be old, old hat. Suddenly, when he started uh, revealing them under Obama, 
people were saying, um, you know, this is, th th this is, uh, y you know, this is fake. We don't trust WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks is Russian propaganda, stuff like that. That, that. That's what started to happen. And that was where everything went wrong. That's where Oliver Stone and people like him, that what they should have done was basically said, uh, we still stand by the work here. We still stand by the whistleblowers. And we're still going to hold those people accountable. And that should have been the movement. Instead of the resistance movement, which obviously had corporate backing, a lot of these people, including the Bernie Sanders supporters, what they ought to have done after the 2016 election, in fact, during the 2016 election, during them, them exit and all of that, and through 2017, when James Clapper was hired to be an analyst, I forget which... Uh, which um, you know, I think it was either MSNBC or CNN. Um, yeah, he, he, he became a CNN national security analyst since 2017. If people really wanted to resist something, they should have protested outside of the CNN center in Atlanta, said, why are you hiring this guy, this, this ogre, this person who lied under oath to Congress, and then uh, later participated in this Russiagate hoax, right? They didn't hold James Clapper accountable then, and that's why he's gone unpunished now. And it's not just James Clapper, it's all the other people who were involved in it, whether it was John Brennan, whether I think Gina Haspel, who, who was appointed CIA director under Trump, I think she was involved as well. I think that James Comey, all of those people, if the left wanted to fight back against the surveillance state, why were they protesting against Donald Trump? The people that were perpetrating all of these crimes didn't work for Trump. They worked for Obama. Maybe Trump continued it, but the person who initiated it, first of all, President Bush, but yes, President Obama appointed people who not only didn't stop what President Bush had done, they built upon it. These are things that Greenwald is still talking about. He actually said that in 20, 2008, the CIA started to say, well, the only way we can salvage this war effort in Afghanistan and get Western European powers to continue to buy into it is by having a charismatic person like Barack Obama, uh, you know, stand up for it. So that's about it. I know we've sort of digressed into a couple other topics. But yeah, I think after four years, we see that uh, Snowden, while it was a passably entertaining movie, was not really the movie needed in order to enhance the gravity of what Edward Snowden was doing for audiences. And by the way, I think I think Snowden himself, he could have like, first of all, what he should have done first and foremost is condemn fully the Obama administration, condemn them and condemn what they've been doing since then. And he knows better. And and sitting in Russia, knowing what knowing the lies that are being peddled since 2016, he has a microphone that he can use in order to tell people not to believe what they're being told. And he's been largely on, you know, he's been invisible on some of these issues. So I, I don't think he's blameless either. I know that he suffered a lot. I know that it's not easy to do what he did. Uh, it's clearly something that many of us probably would have failed at. It's what many of these people who worked at the agencies never did. But uh, I think that we had an opportunity to have a real change in the way the society relates to the intelligence community, given what he did. And a lot of different points were, uh, you know, turning points that could have led to that were missed. And I think we're back to square one if Joe Biden goes into the White House, as it looks like he will. Uh, that's about it. Please like, share and subscribe. Uh, you can find me on some of these other websites, uh, whether, wherever you are right now. So if you are not on YouTube, I'm bold like a leopard on YouTube. BitChute, Chef Leopard. BitChute, by the way, is exploding. So join me on BitChute, minds.com, at Chef Leopard. Subscribe star, also Chef Leopard. Gab, at Starscream85. I still check Gab. So, uh, you know, don't be shy to give me a holler there. Library. Bold like a leopard, so that's library or Odyssey, parlor or rumble.
So have a great day. And by the way, also check out the newsletter and you can sign up. I will put the sign up, I guess, first in the description. And that's about it.